In 1953, Insta Burger King, the first Burger King, opened in Jacksonville in Florida. After visiting the McDonald Brothers' first store in San Bernardino, California, Kramer and Matthew Burns, the uncle of Kramer's wife, bought the rights to two machines called Insta Machines and opened their first restaurants. One of the machines they bought, an oven called the Insta Broiler, was used as a model for how they made things. This plan worked so well that they later made it a requirement for all of their franchises to use it. After the business failed in 1959, James McLemore and David Edgerton, who had franchises in Miami in Florida, bought it. They started reorganizing the chain's business by giving it a new name, Burger King. They ran the business on their own for eight years, growing it to more than 250 locations in the United States. In 1967, they sold it to the Pillsbury Company. During the late 1970s and early 1980s, Pillsbury's management tried several times to change how Burger King was run. In 1978, McDonald's executive Donald N. Smith was hired by Burger King to help the company change. This was the most important change. Smith changed the way business was done at all levels of the company with a plan called Operation Phoenix. Updated franchise agreements, a bigger menu, and new, standard restaurant designs were all part of the changes. Smith left Burger King and went to work for Pepsi in 1980, just before sales dropped across the whole chain. Norman Brinker, Pillsbury's executive vice president of restaurant operations, had to turn the brand around and make it stronger against its main competitor, McDonald's. One of his ideas was to start a new advertising campaign with a series of ads that attacked the company's biggest competitors. The Burger Wars were a time when Burger King, McDonald's, and other top burger chains competed with each other. In 1984, Brinker left Burger King to take over Chili's, a chain of gourmet burger restaurants in Dallas. Smith and Brinker's efforts worked at first, but after they left, Pillsbury eased up on or got rid of many of the changes they made and stopped building as many new stores. These actions stopped the growth of the companies, and sales dropped again, which led to a bad financial slump for Burger King and Pillsbury. Poor management and operations kept the company from moving forward for many years. In the end, the British entertainment company Grand Metropolitan bought Pillsbury in 1989. Grand Met's first CEO, Barry Gibbons, tried to make the chain profitable. The changes he made during his two-year tenure had mixed results, as successful new product launches and partnerships with the Walt Disney Company were balanced out by ongoing image problems and ineffective advertising programs. Gibbons also tried to make money by selling off some of the company's assets and letting go of many of its employees. After Gibbon left, a number of CEOs tried to fix the company's reputation by changing the menu, bringing in new advertising agencies, and making many other changes. When Grand Metropolitan merged with Guinness in 1997 to form the holding company Diageo, parents still didn't care much about the Burger King brand. Over time, the brand's constant institutional neglect by a series of owners hurt the company to the point where major franchises went out of business and its overall value dropped by a lot. Diageo finally decided to get rid of the chain because it was losing money. In 2000, it put the company up for sale. In 2002, a group of investment firms led by TPG Capital bought the company back from Diageo for $1.5 billion. This put the company back in charge of itself. The new owners moved quickly to bring the company back to life and reorganize it. In 2006, the company went public with a very successful initial public offering. The firm's plan to turn around the chain included a new advertising agency and new advertising campaigns. A new menu strategy, a series of programs to fix up individual stores, a new restaurant concept called the BK Whopper Bar, and a new design format called 2020. The company was re-energized by these changes, which led to a number of profitable quarters. Even though the new owners did well, the financial crisis of 2007-2010 hurt the company's finances, while those of McDonald's, which was right next door, got better. Because Burger King's value was going down, TPG and its partners sold their stake in the chain to 3G Capital of Brazil for $3.26 billion. 
Analysts from UBS and Stifle Nicolas both agreed that 3G would have to put a lot of money into the company if it wanted to turn things around. Once the deal was done, the company's stock was taken off the New York Stock Exchange. This ended the company's four-year run as a public company. The company's stock was taken off the stock market so that it could fix its core business structures and keep working to catch up to McDonald's without having to worry about making shareholders happy. In terms of same-store sales in the United States, the chain is now in third place, behind Ohio-based Wendy's. The drop is because sales at the same stores have gone down for 11 quarters in a row. In August 2014, 3G said it wanted to buy the Canadian coffee shop and restaurant chain Tim Hortons and merge it with Burger King. Bagsha Hathaway, which is run by Warren Buffett, would help pay for this. After they merge, the two chains will still run separately, with Burger King keeping its headquarters in Miami. A representative for Tim Hortons said that the proposed merger would allow Tim Hortons to use the resources of Burger King to grow internationally. The new company will be the third largest fast food restaurant chain in the world. The deal stirred up a debate about tax inversions, which is when a company lowers the amount of taxes it pays by moving its headquarters to a country with lower tax rates. Called a tax haven, but keeps most of its operations in its old location. As a high-profile example of a tax inversion, the merger was criticized by U.S. politicians who thought that the move would result in a loss of tax revenue to foreign interests and could lead to more government pressure against inversions. In 2019, Burger King said that it planned to close up to 250 low-traffic locations each year, starting in 2020. In Los Angeles, Miami, New York City, New Jersey, and Long Island, New York, the Royal Perks. Customer loyalty program was tested for the first time in February 2021. In March 2022, after Russia invaded Ukraine, Burger King stopped all of its business in Russia, including operations, marketing, the supply chain, investments, and plans to grow. It stopped giving money to the more than 800 restaurant chains in Russia that were fully franchised and were run by a local master franchisee. But the International Consortium of Investigative Journalism found that Burger King kept its stake in the Russian franchises. Through an offshore joint venture with the Russian state-owned VTB Bank and a Ukrainian investment firm with ties to corrupt deals with Ukraine's former pro-Russian leader. In 1963, BK opened its first restaurant outside of the U.S. mainland in San Juan in Puerto Rico, but it didn't go worldwide until much later. In 1969, Pillsbury opened its first restaurant in Canada. It was in Windsor, Ontario. Soon after that, restaurants opened in 1971 in the area of Inaloo, Australia, and in 1975 in Madrid, Spain. In 1982, BK and its franchisees opened restaurants in South Korea, Japan, Taiwan, and Singapore. All of BK's stores in Japan closed in 2001 because there was so much competition. In June 2007, BK came back to the market. At the end of the 1970s, BK started doing business in Mexico. After that, it opened in Caracas, Venezuela, Santiago, Chile and Buenos Aires, Argentina. Internationally, Burger King is almost 12,000 stores behind McDonald's, but as of 2008, it was the largest chain in Mexico and Spain. EMEA, APAC, and LAC are the three regions where the company does business around the world, LAC. In each of these places, Burger King has set up subsidiaries to look for strategic partnerships and alliances. Burger King Europe GmbH sells franchises and builds them in the EMU region. BK Asia Pack, PT. Limited, which is based in Singapore, manages franchises in East Asia, the Asian subcontinent, and the Oceanic regions, the Caribbean islands, Central and South America, and Mexico all make up the LAC region. In Australia, Burger King is known by a different name. When the company started doing business in Australia in 1971, 
they found out that a takeout food restaurant in Adelaide had copied their name. Burger King gave Jack Cowan, the Australian franchisee, a list of trademarks that could be used to name the Australian locations. Cowan added an apostrophe to Pillsbury's Hungry Jack brand name to make it Hungry Jack's. After the trademark ran out in the late 1990s, Burger King tried to bring the brand to Europe. After losing a lawsuit, Hungry Jack's gave the territory to its franchisee. Hungry Jack's is now the only Burger King brand in Australia. Cowan's company, Hungry Jack's Party Limited, is the master franchise and runs everything there. Burger King only helps with paperwork and advertising to ensure a unified marketing plan. Beijing McDonald's Beijing Airport's Burger King in 2008, Burger King predicted that its international growth would account for 80% of its market share over the next 10 years. While the TPG-led group keeps BK's international expansion going by announcing more franchise locations in Eastern Europe, Africa, the Middle East, and Brazil, the company plan is to focus on India, China, and Japan. The company plans to open more than 250 stores in Asia and Macau by the end of 2012. Since most Hindus don't like beef, the company's expansion into India puts it at a disadvantage against KFC. BK wants to grow in that country by selling non-beef items like tender crisp and tender grilled chicken sandwiches. 3G expects to keep growing around the world and may even speed up its growth to improve its return on investment ROI. Burger King has had a hard time finding franchisees in Brazil and other parts of Latin America, where 3G could help it grow. In December 2020, Burger King India will have its IPO on the BSC and NSE. There were too many people who wanted to buy shares in the IPO. On December 14, the stock opened at 112.5 cents per share and closed at 135 cents.